Sport and song go together like willow and leather, Jerusalem and fields of bath and rye. Billy Jean of Rattilova, Bristol City, Bristol Rover, songs to make you laugh and songs to make you cry. Well, that was the chorus of a little song called Knowing the Score or Sport and Song Go Together, which I wrote last year. Uh, you can hear the rest of it after the talk. And the talk is about sport and family history. And just as sport and song go together, so too does sport and family history. And at all sorts of levels, from the lowest amateur who was doing it for fun, right up to the top professional. And there's lots of evidence there to prove it. So here we go, as they say, on with the show. Now then, here we've got a list here of all the primary and secondary sources, that's sources which come from the actual time in history and secondary sources which are written up at a later date. Doesn't mean they're any worse because secondary sources sometimes draw on primary sources and make life a lot easier for the reader. We also have written and pictorial sources. And we're going to be dealing with uh, the written ones, uh, contemporary books, that's books from the, the time at which your ancestor was playing the sport. Uh, school magazines, again, primary source from the time. Uh, newspaper accounts from the time, particularly the sporting press, which grew up uh, in the Victorian period. Um, programs, cards, scorecards, all again, primary sources from the time. The sixth one here, though, Recent club programmes and glossy magazines are secondary sources. They are from a later date, but still extremely useful, as you'll see when we get to that one. Songs and ballads from the time, scrapbooks from the time, and people's personal sporting archives and diaries from the time. They're primary. Uh, club archives and regional archives are also primary sources. And finally, we have oral sources, and of course, those are limited in terms of time. They are um, first hand, obviously, but they only go back now probably to the 1930s. And of course, we've got to remember that people's memories sometimes aren't what they used to be. On the pictorial side, we've got uh, the good old photograph um, from the early 20th century, some moving images, um, number 14. Uh, before the time of photographs, of course, you had prints. Um, sometimes active prints of games actually going ahead. We have cartoons, we have uh, cigarette cards which were very popular in the late 19th century, early 20th century, and ephemera, that's odds and ends like cups and caps and medals and things like that. So shall we start off then with uh, some uh, books? This one here is uh, the life of a uh, favourite footballer of mine called Chris Balderston, who was the, the only person to play uh, both professional cricket and football on the same day. Now, Chris was immaculate with everything he did. He kept a diary. Um, he responded to every letter that he ever received. He was an immaculate man, and um, his life story is very readable, and that would apply to, say, the 1960s. The next one... We go a little bit further back into the 1950s, a um, uh, book here called uh, Rugby Renegade by uh, Gus Risman, a very famous rugby league player. Now, I chose these two books because they deal with the early years in which these players were playing. And if you find a book like this, you'll discover often that uh, somebody in your family who may not have gone on to great things is actually mentioned here uh, because they do talk quite a bit about the, their early days in the sport. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, the famous Michael Parkinson and the cricket umpire Dickie Bird and Geoffrey Boycott, when he was young, actually played for the same uh, local cricket team in Yorkshire. So if you had an ancestor who was an umpire or involved in that league, uh, there's three chances there, three, three autobiographies where they might turn up. So books from the time are well worth looking at. The next one we come to here is the uh, good old school magazine. Now this one here is uh, from the 19th century and I was actually looking for a, 
a man who appears there called AJ Symes, who was an um, Olympic cricketer. Yes, unbelievably, in 1900, uh, cricket was played at the Olympics. Now, you'll get in, in uh, School Magazine, you'll get an account of the game, and you'll often get the team. And if you have a look at the bottom here, when you come to any kind of grammar school or public school, most people had uh, a couple of initials, which is very, very helpful, as you know, when we're actually searching family trees and uh, looking for ancestors who have got fairly common surnames. There, if you look down here, there's one or two unusual names, G. H. Gwythar and A. S. Gulston, etc., etc. Um, a school magazine came into my family history. My dad said that he'd been a good cricketer. I didn't believe him. He found a school magazine from 1932 for Whitchurch Grammar School in which he took four wickets for eight runs in a house match. So he proved himself right. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. To watch the extended uninterrupted version, go to familyhistory.tv, link in the description. You will also find a host of talks from other experts on a variety of subjects. Don't forget to subscribe to get notified when these videos become available.